Hi, my name is Ibis Garcia Zambrana. I am a professor at the University of Utah, and this lecture is about what is a theory of change. This lecture will help you to understand your assigned reading, the community builder's approach to theory of change, a practical guide to theory development by Andrea Anderson, who has dedicated her life to help foundations to create the change they would like to see in communities. I'm not sure if you have heard before of what is a theory of change. The first time I heard about it, I was working with a group of nonprofits in Washington, D.C., and this was part, um, actually, I was part of the consultant team with the Asset Based Community Development Institute in DePaul University, Chicago. And we were trying to figure out uh, with these like, uh, different organizations the change that each organization was trying to make. And the idea it was um, looking at the steps of how uh, this change will happen. So these like um, institutes, museums, and libraries were trying to understand what was their theory of change. When we start a project or an intervention, we sort of know where we would like to go and what we would like to accomplish. But um, what is missing sometimes is that middle part of what are the steps that we need to take in order to accomplish that goal. So oftentimes organizations, especially nonprofit organizations, are doing their work um, day to day um, and they are accomplishing um, these like different goals, but at the same time, they might not know um, if they are accomplishing them. So a theory of change is sort of a roadmap of um, where are we going, how will you get there, and how we know that we have arrived to where we wanted to arrive. Usually theories of change are represented in some kind of visual representation. This is a logic model, you might um, call it. And uh, literally, a logic model is a picture of your program or your intervention. So it shows what is your long-term outcome. In other words, what are you trying to accomplish or the goal? And a mo mo logic model is simply this graphic representation that is simple to follow. And it shows um, that middle part of what the, are the intermediate outcomes or preconditions. In other words, what needs to happen before we actually see results. Here's a dia diagram. We are looking um, at a pathway of change, um, indicators to measure success. So you have like these interventions along the pathway, and you also have like um, assumptions that uh, make the theory make sense. And the theory of change, um, again, is represented by this like logic model that can be a core planning tool for um, evaluation to answer the question of, um, are we there yet? Part of the idea of a logic model is that it provides this like simple framework to follow and it's something that you could simply be sharing with others um, in your organization so you can also like make um, corrections if something is not um, really working out. We actually use logic models or theories of change uh, pretty much every day. So let's look at this, um, that it has like, some preconditions, interventions, and outcomes. And this is just an, an example, that is a simple example that I hope you can um, really grasp what is a theory of change. So let's imagine that we want to take a family vacation and um, the outcome for us is that we just have one, our family to have a good time and just enjoying being together. And um, pay, based on our previous experiences, we know um, so in other words, like our personal research um, tell us that camping is something that uh, we all enjoy doing together. So in order um, to take this um, camping trip, we need to take the following actions or um, interventions. So this is like the steps that are needed to achieve an outcome. So but basically, we need to drive to the state park, we need to set up a camp, we need to cook um, and then play with each other. Uh, so basically what I'm saying is like, okay, so I know what is the outcome, the long-term goal, um, but for that to happen, then we need to do X, Y, and Y. So basically um, here we're thinking, if this happens, then this happens. And that's an assumption they, that we are also like making. Um, so because we have seen this like worked um, in the past, it could be that again, you drive to the state park and you set up a camp, you cook, and then um, maybe um, it's raining and you don't have a great time with your family, or maybe um, these, uh, the brothers and sisters start fighting and then you don't have a great time. But we can say 
um, that we're going to assume that these things will actually like take us to the outcome that we would like um, to see. Now let's think about preconditions, which is um, what we have and what is available to us in order to get the desired um, outcome. So for this, we need um, family members and we need to have like a car that is accessible um, to us. Maybe we need a park that is like nearby. We have to have money. So we have to have all these things. These are like preconditions in order for us to be able to have these like interventions and then um, the outcome. So this could help us think again, what are the materials that we need? Um, and maybe we have to buy something that um, we don't have. Uh, we have to again, go to Target and get like a, a tent or we need to um, go to a supermarket to get some um, food. Um, and again, we have to um, just decide what are the things that we also wanted to do, the cooking, the hiking, and have like those um, materials this, um, that we need. So this is, again, the interventions are the actions that we need to um, take, um, but we need these previous things in order to be able to take these um, actions. And we could also anticipate that there will be some problems, um, like I, I said before, in previous steps. Like, for example, Alina and Sophie are going to fight about Barbies um, and who gets to use X Barbie. So you can think ahead of time of what you can do to amel ameliorate that um, issue. So you could think about, OK, I'm going to distract them by going fishing instead or whatever. Um, it is. So here again, we have like, what are the preconditions, what are the interventions and what are the outcomes? And the way that this is helpful is that it, um, through these like different assumptions, we could say um, if we do, if we have this and we do this, then we get to this um, space that we want to um, be or we um, achieve or um, ultimate goal. And by doing this, we can also see um, in these steps which things might go wrong and we can do things to ameliorate the uh, potential problems that will um, emerge. So here's an example um, of a project that I work um, in for the rapid rehousing um, program. And um, first of all, notice that you can um, call the inputs or preconditions. Um, you have like activities or interventions, measurements or indicators, and then the, the outcomes. Um, there's different ways that different authors might um, just um, name um, these and so the Anderson reading might be a little bit different that you see in this particular um, example um, but here if we have like this input of which are the like preconditions and we will, will look at the first line it says um, that this is what we need we need like housing specialists um, to be part of this program and then it says you know what are the activities um, that basically and what are the interventions that they will do. So the housing specialists are going to identify um, housing. And actually, I didn't mention that the Rapid Rehousing Program is a program for um, homeless um, families. And it's like run by um, usually local um, churches that are given money from um, uh, the Housing Urban Development or HUD. Um, to provide these like vouchers that are like short term for um, homeless families, say three months, six months, no more than 12 uh, months. So here again, you have that the action that this housing specialist will take is to identify the, the housing. Um, and they do that by creating relationships with landlords, right? So how do we measure that they're doing um, okay and what are these indicators? So it would be like the number of landlords which um, a program has a relationship. And um, the outcome in this particular um, case um, is that participants spend a short amount of time um, homeless. And actually there's also like a difference between like just um, intermediary outcomes and more like long-term um, outcomes. So in this example that I'm providing, part of the idea is like the, the homeless family will not be more than 30 days in the shelter. So if you can identify a housing for them, make that connection with the landlord, the idea is that they will not be more than 30 days. And if they spend a short amount of time in the shelter specifically, that um, it is um, a, a good outcome. However, at the end, the long-term, long-term outcome is that these families are um, either having a Section 8 voucher that they obtain, so they could be in this program temporarily, apply for a voucher and get that, or they can find um, long-term employment and childcare 
and therefore um, after these three months that they're in the program or maybe six months uh, a, up to a year they are able to um, actually like rent in the private market on their own so that's like a potential thing that um, could could happen um, and the another outcome could be that those families are like chronically homeless that will not go in those two different paths meaning section eight um, or some kind of affordable housing and um, going to the private market it will they will actually be placed in permanent supportive housing um, which um, in that case they will also have the same outcome which is like they will um, be housed and they will be um, basically living on their um, own so having some kind of independent living even if they have supported services attached to them. But the point being is that um, here we can see what are those assumptions that we're making on things that we need in order to get to this um, uh, outcome. And we can look at the second line in here in where we have like, you know, we need case managers um, and then these case managers can help people to um, with their um, rental assistance and they are able to um, have people sign leases first of all apply for the leases and then sign leases and be um, housed and part of the idea is that again these um, people um, have have a home at least for the uh, short term but then um, if the case manager in this case helps them to find a job and to um, also find childcare, maybe there's people who um, need to um, go to rehab uh, or receive some some kind of um, medical treatment, um, especially related to mental health. Um, so they are able to meet with the case managers um, and they're able to work um, those um, things things out. So all those things could be kind of um, indicators, right? Like how many meetings there were with the case managers um, and just like measure. Uh, anything that is measurable, it will be like part of the indicator. And you can look at this um, table more um, carefully. So here is a um, different way of looking at this. This is from a different organization that is working in the same program, in the rapid rehousing program. Um, and you can see that sometimes these um, logic models of theory change, they might start differently. Um, so there might be different ways of doing it, different ways of like um, labeling the, the top and just being able to like fill out again, what are the assumptions, what are the preconditions or inputs. Um, and then l l having the, the outcomes. So here we start with the overall goal of success. Um, one of these like long-term goals is that people do not return um, to homelessness. And the input or precondition is that you will need to make, in order to make this possible, for example, is you need to give a family a case manager to help them find housing and employment. And you also need to give them a housing voucher um, in this case, a rapid rehousing voucher until they can rent on their own or until um, the program reaches like 12 months, which is the maximum. And in activities, um, we can put here where it's like the necessary process, like someone has to apply and has to be placed in a home. Um, someone has to be given a case manager. And these are the things that we are assuming, um, right? So that will happen before um, or ter long term outcome um, is achieved. Then in the output, we have the numbers um, of applications that are filled, right? So this is more of um, the measurements or indicators, how many meetings the case managers had with families. Um, and again, just these are just measurements that we can evaluate how uh, well are we doing um, and where we need to improve. Um, so we can know, for example, if the applications are taking too, too long. If our goal was to have families in the homeless shelter for their than 30 days, um, we could say, well, people are spending 45 days um, looking for housing. Why is that? Is it because are we adding barriers to families um, in the sense that uh, maybe they have to present too much like paperwork, uh, maybe they need help with their applications, uh, maybe we are not getting enough landlords enrolled um, in the program, or maybe the um, clients are missing appointments um, because they um, cannot get to see the place um, because they don't have reliable transportation. So basically, this is why this is helpful. So we can measure uh, how we're doing and what um, we can um, improve. This is yet another example, same program, different organization, different way of looking at this. 
So this is to say that there's not like a right way of doing this. Basically, this logic model is like to help you think of how you will do it and what are the steps to get to the change that you want to see. Uh, basically, the steps and this whole thing is like that theory of change. This is how change will happen. And as you can see, we have here uh, shorter outcomes, intermediate outcomes, and long-term um, outcomes. So in this same program, we might say um, the shorter outcomes are, are that um, families are in a stable accommodation, right? They're housed, they're not in the shelter. Um, also, they're receiving services through the client, um, I mean, to the case management, so they have access to health promotion services, um, and they can participate in all these programs, right? And then we have some more intermediary outcomes that it might be um, increased self-reliance for housing um, provision. Um, so it could be that, you know, in this program, their house, and then um, you ask them to pay like 30% of their income in rent, um, and you're helping them to find a job. So it's kind of like this middle ground. Um, they, they start addressing maybe some of the issues related to health, or maybe they start to go to rehab, and then they um, you see a decrease in substance um, use. And then in the long-term outcomes, we might see um, a decreased needs of this housing support. Maybe they're more like um, self-sufficient. They have they found their home. They might not need any more um, case um, management, and and so on. And this is a spreadsheet I um, usually use to build my logic models and just to write down the theory of change. Um, this is included in your model. The point here is to simply give you an idea of how you might build your own. As I said before, there's not a right way to do it or a wrong way to do it. The important thing is that you think through um, logically of um, how you will achieve your um, goal. What are the steps that you need to take? Really, the whole point is to help you think about what are the intermediate steps that you need to um, do and basically not wait for a miracle to occur. Like here we have like this picture of like, we have this formula and then we have this formula and you know, sometimes somehow there was a miracle, <laughs> but um, yeah, we know that that's very unlikely. So the idea is that you don't rely in these miracles and that you actually um, are thinking about how to get to your goal. And the whole point of a theory change um, process is that you challenge your assumptions of how you can get from point A to point B so you know if your intervention had an actual impact. A very important point is that the theory change cannot um, be done just sitting in your cubicle alone by yourself. You actually need to do this with stakeholders and stakeholders are people who are interested, they're invested, uh, or they have power to make um, change, even if their interest is low. But the point is that you have to bring these people to the table and uh, with them make a theory of change. So what is the dream? What is the vision? And how we can make this um, come true and um, use everybody's resources. So in order your organizations, you will need a lot of collaboration in order to make um, this happen. Like in the previous example, looking at um, the landlords or the services that um, were provided for um, homeless families. Um, regarding participation, it's important to note that one theory of change um, is effective um, if the, it is the result of a participatory process. Um, and Anderson's reading talks about like different things that you can do. You can do like dot voting, you can do brainstorming sessions. Um, there's different ways of involving a wide range of um, stakeholders. And um, it's also important that to note that a well done participatory process involves uh, setting aside um, preconceptions and just like listening um, to others. So I hope that um, you find this uh, lecture helpful in order to understand a little bit better um, the Anderson reading and also what we are trying to achieve in this class because in the end um, we want to create um, policies or um, strategies that will achieve our, our goal um, and our goal um, could be um, just like zoning for equity, it's a big goal. So how we get um, there, what are the things that we need to um, do? And we will spend um, the rest of the semester talking about that, um, the theory of change and how you achieve it. Um, see you next time.